Thanks, Derek. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Burns, and I call the meeting of March 1st for the Moorhead Economic Development Authority to order. And with that, uh, Amy, would you call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ali? Hi. Thank you. Anderson? Here. Burns? Here. Carlson? Here. Coda? Here. Cusa? Hand? Paulson? Here. Schaumann? Here. Soline? Absent? Deb White? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Are there any agenda oh. amendments to add? Chair Burns, I was just gonna. I, if, oh, that, I'm sorry. Yep, no worries. Uh, I just wanted to make a couple comments. Um, we haven't had a meeting in a couple months, and we wanted to make sure we recognize uh, our, one of our EDA members who is now uh, off the MBA board and off our EDA, and that's Pat Kovash. Uh, Pat. Uh, served on the EDA for a number of, of years and served on the MBA for a number of, of years. Uh, we are very grateful for his uh, service to us and to the city, and we, we definitely wanted to have a special shout out to Pat uh, for all he's done for, for this community, and I know he'll still be active and sends us notes from time to time, so uh, we thank Pat, and we welcome uh, James Hand as the MBA representative for uh, the EDA committee here. So, uh, James, if you don't mind maybe introducing yourself and uh, just keep it very brief, your kind of uh, uh, ideas of being on the EDA and what you hope to get out of it. There you go. Thank you, James, and welcome. Thank you, and welcome, James. Next item on the agenda, are there any agenda amendments? No changes from staff's perspective. Thank you. On to the next item we go. Uh, let's approve the minutes from December 7th. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Second on the floor. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Are there any citizens who care to address the board? Commissioner's reports. Anyone have uh, a report that you'd like to share? Sherry? Thank you very much for having us here today as in the MBA. So for many of you, you're probably wondering what the Moorhead Business Association is all about. We are the voice for the Moorhead businesses. The MBA is committed to building a better place to conduct business by enhancing current businesses and being creating a community atmosphere which helps us encourage new businesses. This year we're celebrating our 11th year. The MBA is a cross-section of businesses from legal, construction, manufacturing, insurance, nonprofits, realtors, financial, restaurants, and bars. Currently the MBA membership would be at 271 businesses this year as well as 391 business contacts. The MBA team and the Moorhead, or excuse me, the board members of 12 are involved with the Downtown Moorhead Inc., the Moorhead Community Fund, the Chamber, Concordia College, Resilience Task Force, the Safe Roads Coalition, One Million Cups, and of course James Hand, the President, which was announced today as part of the EDA Board. In 2020, we had 91 new businesses join the MBA. 
In 2021, we're excited for we are already at 18 new businesses that have joined the MBA since the beginning of the year. The MBA is now offering a student entrepreneurship membership for college students to get connected, experience the networking opportunities with our MBA members. They're asked to be an active participant in planning one of the many MBA events. In 2020, Nick Lear joined the MBA as in April as the assistant director that makes up the MBA team. The Mort Alliance and nonprofits, we're celebrating our first anniversary when we meet once a month. We have over 18 at one time that have attended this meeting of all different nonprofits. There's been 40 nonprofits that are interested in this group. The MBA also created in 2020 support Moorhead restaurants and bars, and we have more than 2,300 members. And we also have the support Moorhead businesses with 596 members on Facebook. We still have our weekly Let's Talk business meetings. We did not miss a beat during the COVID time. We were e either meeting in person via Zoom, and now we're meeting in person and Zoom. Our guest speaker this week, we meet on Wednesday at noon, will be Shannon Fole, the president and CEO of the Fargo-Moorhead Chamber of Commerce and West Fargo Chamber of Commerce. With the growth of the MBA, we also have a new member committee, which is made up of members that are mentoring new members. With those 91 new members, we have our, our mentors that go out and reach out to them, update them on uh, upcoming events, inform them, and answer any questions. We've also included now adding the um, new executive directors as well. To kick off 2021, we had Frostival Moorhead, which was a huge success. Frostival expanded from one week to events to take over over seven weeks of events. Thanks to the Moorhead Parks and Rec and the Moorhead businesses, there were over 72 events that took place during this time, and Moorhead had 18 of those events. The annual MBA snow sculpture competition this year took over the top with the theme, the snow must go on. Last week we had a follow-up meeting for Frostival 2022 and we're looking for bigger and better things. Upcoming, we have our Moorhead annual party golf tournament. This takes place on May 27th at the Meadows. In 2020 and postponing this tournament till July, we now had, we had 20 uh, teams that participated. Our goal this year is 36, and we are already at 20 teams. The proceeds from Mulligans and the raffle prizes will go towards our 4th of July celebration. And right now we have our early bird team and whole sponsorships available until March 15th. So if any of you need to sign up, let me know. Uh, 2020 was a year of pivot, and that came up with plan A, B, and C, especially for our 4th of July celebration. It was held at the Horizon Shores Park with the theme of drive up and tune in. With the change of this location, the smaller fire fireworks were replaced with larger fireworks. And for 28 minutes, fireworks display were viewed all over Moorhead from the Island Park in Fargo and at least 15 to 20 miles outside of Moorhead. We are now working on, for, um, on the 4th of July celebration for 2021. And we're excited to say we're at Horizon Shores Park again. And we do have fireworks sponsorships available this afternoon, so please uh, check out our website. Bridge Bash, we're welcoming back the college students. This has always taken place during the Greater Moorhead Days, and we're doing a little flip on that as well. We're looking at um, expanding that for over a week and working with the Moorhead Parks and Rec to induce, to introduce the students to the parks and the trails. Watch for more details. The Moorhead Business Association would like to thank all of you for the opportunity to share a small part of our story with you today. And if you are not a business, if, you're not, if your business is not a member of the MBA, please join us. And thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Are Absolutely. there any questions from anyone? If you don't mind, Chair. Uh, I just have to say, you know, thank you to Sherry. She's uh, been a great partner to Downtown Moorhead Inc. and just economic development in general. Uh, we frequently speak and, and talk through different challenges that are out there. So I know the collaboration and especially the communication to our businesses is, is uh, the reason why we've, um, we've gotten through a very challenging 2020. So I thank you for, for all your work that you and the MBA do. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, um, the next item on the agenda is... Mr. Chair, I just, I had my hand up. I just wondered if I could have a moment. 
Oh, sure. I'd Thanks. I, I also just wanted to take a moment first to thank uh, MBA for their amazing work with Frostable. I was one of the people with Dan Molly and I think Representative Keeler who get were uh, invited to be judges for the snow sculpture. And I just have to say that event alone, just what a phenomenal day it was. I, I walked through Woodlawn Park and I saw here it is in the middle of winter and so many people out doing the um, Frisbee golf in the snow, walked over to the Yemcombs and the place was just, you know, uh, so many people everywhere, kids sledding down the hill and people having a great time. And the snow sculptures were wonderful. And it just, you know, it's all, it's a good event in, in any year, but this year, more than any year, we needed something like that. And you guys just had such a wonderful, positive impact on our community. And I just can't say enough good about that and how, um, how uh, you know, it really showed what a great community we are. And then I love the idea that you're doing a, a student membership. And as an educator, you know, I'll, I'll be eager to promote that. And so I'll connect with you to see what I can do to just help get the word out about that. But thanks again for all your great work. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, thank you. Uh, next item uh, involves the discussion of the resolution to approve the master development agreement for the uh, Emory Apartments LLC. And I'll turn that over to Derek to d fill us all in with the details. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, yes, very, uh, very excited to bring this project forward. We have uh, Brian Bachman from Enclave Development, who is representing uh, this this newly formed LLC, Emory Apartments. So, uh, I'll give a brief background, and then maybe we can give a chance for Brian to say a few words if I've missed anything, and then be ultimately looking forward for uh, the discussion and ultimate uh, decision on this uh, project. So. With that being said, um, this is a little bit of a refresher from a, a number of months back. Back in October, uh, the EDA reviewed and approved the TIF plan. This was a, a plan that's a statutory, as a statutory requirement to approve a redevelopment plan for the A Street redevelopment housing project. Uh, you may recall at that point in time, we were looking at uh, creating a TIF plan that provided some flexibility that extended benefit uh, to ultimately help with the commercial component to the the west of this housing project. Uh, since that time, we've had many, many conversations with uh, our, our um, uh, financial advisors in Baker Tilly, as well as Enclave, and many uh, department heads in legal. Uh, we ultimately did, made a determination that it'd be best to separate the two projects. So we, we are looking at just the housing component here today. Uh, so we're looking at the construction of a, a 130 unit multifamily housing project with underground parking, uh, some surface parking and private park area. The investment is a, a minimum of $20 million. Uh, as mentioned, the, the name, uh, we, we've been working with Enclave, but the name of this particular apartments will be Emory Apartments. Uh, because of the housing TIF and the statutory requirements, there is a affordable housing uh, component to these, this, this project. Uh, so it's anticipated that at least 40% of the dwelling units will uh, be available for rent by persons whose incomes do not exceed 60% of the area-wide area, area medium family income. Uh, so we are seeing a, a good portion of the 130 units that will be allocated towards affordable housing. Uh, as mentioned in the TIF plan, we had that maximum benefit up to 26 years. We've been able to define that uh, much further to a term up to 16 years to pay for qualified expenses. Uh, again, for TIF, uh, qualified uh, costs include acquisition, site development, and construction. So uh, those are the, the components of it. Um, Amy just put up a, a preliminary site plan here provided by Enclave and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, we have a construction timeline because of this agreement, we do have uh, placeholders, uh, placeholders in there of when they need to be completed by, uh, but the plans are if approved here, uh, Enclave and Emory Apartments would start construction this spring. Um, so on the screen here, again, what we're just looking at and this particular 
uh, project is the housing component of it. So five story, 130 units, some underground parking at that particular site, as well as some of the garage buildings to the west. Uh, this has its own uh, parcel that we've created. There's the green space to the north as you get to the, the ramp. Um, and I wanna make it very clear, our, our plans are, the plans are still to see major changes to the commercial side of this project, so to the west. Uh, and we anticipate to have continued conversations with Enclave and be bringing forward something uh, within the next uh, few weeks or, or months. So we are uh, supporting this. Uh, we've done a lot of financial analysis through Baker Tilly and through the finance department. Um, with that, maybe I'll pause. I'll let Brian uh, Bachman fill in any gaps I may have, and we look forward to your conversation and discussion. Thanks, Derek. Um, no, he did a, a really good job of getting this, uh, the introduction. Um, basically, what we've had to, to do to kind of make this work is to split the projects into two, where we are um, moving the apartment project ahead um, get a little bit more on a fast track and then uh, working with Dan and Derek and the team there to uh, come up with a plan for how to uh, best redevelop the retail areas that go along with this. So uh, plan for this project would be to start construction in the spring. Uh, plans are complete. Um, I apologize for not having a rendering. Um, We've been working back and forth with, uh, we just hired a, a new gentleman that does all of our renderings and been going back and forth on some color schemes um, while trying to tie this together with what we're looking at doing on the retail side. So it's a little bit more complicated in trying to make all of those work with um, uh, color schemes of retailers that are existing and ones that we've talked to and the rest try to make sure that everybody's happy. So we're, we're a few more people at the table to um, try to get happy on that one. So we'll have that shortly, but um, no plans to kick this thing off uh, as soon as possible. Yet this spring, um, there'll be a 14 to 16 month time frame on the long side for uh, construction and uh, looking forward to bringing this project into uh, the marketplace. We, we do have a, a, good, a good selection of uh, affordable units that we've brought into this project as well. Um, so looking forward to being able to help some people in the community with those as well. Thank you for that uh, description and introduction, both. Uh, I'd like to... Um, Put forth any questions from anyone, uh, either for Derek. Hmm? Commissioner White, you, you have your uh, hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, let me just say, I, I know I've said this before, but I wanna say, I think this is a great project and I really appreciate that we're tying it to housing and in particular working at increasing our stock of affordable housing. And so I love the project and I hope this can be a model for uh, a similar work in the future. And really my only question was, um, about the, so I know that the quali one of the qualified expenses is site development. And I wanted to just see, does, I'm assuming that includes remediation. And, and, and so maybe er too early to really um, get a sense of what those costs might be, but is this, um, would it be able to be used for remediation? And if, would that be sufficient? Or if those costs ended up being, uh, you know, excessive, is there other support that might be provided? Um, so again, it may be too early or, uh, to make those. those yeah, and uh, maybe I'll take that first too. And Brian, if I'm missing anything, please please jump in. Thank you for that comment. So uh, on specifically the green space where the housing project is, um, I don't think there's any contamination there. So I think we're okay. Uh, there was a, a little bit of a water table issue. And I know uh, we've worked that into some of the numbers when we're working with Baker Tilly. Um, but I don't think we have uh, too much to worry about from a contamination standpoint, but Brian, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, we may have lost Brian, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that there's no, uh, 
uh, contamination. I think they've done a um, an assessment out there. I just do know that there was a water table issue, so they were they were looking to uh, try to go a little bit deeper uh, out there, and I think they were running into some challenges. So we have accommodated that and gone through the process of uh, of working that through the numbers. It's for those that don't know these these TIF projects are are very extensive, um, as you can imagine. Reading through, if you did read through the agreement, they're very detailed. Uh, so we're, uh, we try to kind of cross our T's and dot the I's on this one and, and uh, go through a lot of the numbers. Mr. Chair? Yes. We do have a hand raised by Joel Paulson. Okay. Joel? According to my screen, we've lost all video contact, perhaps with all of our, our um, virtual our virtual meeting so um not really sure what to tell you but his hand was up while we wait can i maybe take a question sure uh hopefully we take care of those problems but uh th so the question i had is well i think it's fantastic that we found a way to use tiff uh number one to facilitate some low-income housing in the community and diversifies that stock my question is on the interstate corridor, on the gateway overlay from a uh, land use perspective, since it's now a standalone project, uh, does that mean that other developers could come forward with true multifamily only developments on our interstate corridor? So uh, if, if I can, uh, this project did go through the planning commission uh, at an earlier date uh, and had an uh, approved zoning request. Um, I would say, I mean, everything's a case by case, right? You can always, sorry if, I, if I'm speaking through you there, Michael. Um, I'd say everything's a case by case, but I think uh, because we, we feel certain, or at the time we feel very certain that the commercial component's still going forward and that overall mixed use is happening, maybe it's not formalized through one agreement, um, that this still makes it as an appealing use for the overall kind of area. But it did go through the Planning Commission and it, is going back to planning commission on Wednesday for a uh, uh, CUP for height as well. So further conversations may occur there as well. And then the follow-up question to that, uh, again, very supportive of the project. So just to understand and provide some information to the public, uh, is does the same developer enclave have site control over the commercial aspect currently so that there is some relative degree of certainty of redevelopment? Yes, they do. Um, I, I don't want to speak for Brian, but yes, they do. They have their purchase agreements in place. They have site acquisition at this point in time, correct? So I think that's another reason why we felt comfortable. If it was still speculative. Derek, can you hear me? We can hear you, Brian. I think we lost uh, audio there for a bit. Um, okay. Yeah, we do own all of the property. Uh, we closed uh, a couple months ago. Great. Thanks, Brian, and good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too, Jeff. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh, just to build off of uh, Council Member White's question about replicating uh, these TIF projects throughout uh, Moorhead or other locations, and um, just for the record, I'm extremely supportive of this. This project looks uh, looks very good. Um, is the 40% affordable housing requirement uh, related to um, the state statute as far as the ability to set up a TIF district? I uh, to not to set up a district, but the project itself uh, by statutory requirement has to have that affordable component, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, that was my only question, Derek, thank you. I, I should clarify as well, so um, obviously today we're looking for the recommendation and the, the approval of the EDA. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it goes to Planning Commission on Wednesday for the CUP. If that goes forward, um, our, our intent is to bring it forward to the March 8th City Council, so next week, Monday, where it would have uh, the developer agreement, we would have the as a stormwater agreement, a CUP, uh, and I think there might be one more thing and I'm blanking on it right now, but there's a, there's a significant slate of items that goes forward 
uh, as we talked about being very extensive with the, the TIF agreements. Any other questions? Chair Burns? Yes. Say this is Dan Molly, and I just want to uh, thank uh, Brian and the Enclave team for being such a flexible partner. Uh, we've been trying to make this project work now for a few months. Uh, anyone that thinks that they know what commercial and retail is going to look like uh, post COVID is not telling you the truth. So um, <laughs> there's just no possible way. Uh, so I really appreciate the flexibility. The other piece that's been happening here as we talk about this being a new um, kind of endeavor, uh, you know, we're trying to accept a culture of experimentation here a bit, trying new things until we find things that work. And if we find something that works, we want to replicate it. And this is a housing tip. This is different than Moorhead's history with these sorts of uh, in, uh, uh, taxing and financing partnerships. Um, you know, we're, we've done economic development tips, we've done redevelopment tips and that, and that sort of thing. This one, the, uh, the priority is on housing and there is this affordability component. So I'm glad that we recognize it. It's consistent with local plans, local goals uh, and studies uh, that we're aware of. So I wanna just express appreciation to the uh, Economic Development Authority for being so uh, supportive, especially as we try new things here. Um, you have our word that um, we will, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're hitting, like Derek said, every step along the way, whether it be the Planning Commission and then on to the City Council, we've, we've endeavored to be as open and transparent as, as, we possibly, as we possibly could here. And we also have committed to the developer that we will work with the sense of urgency, whereby they will get certainty um, to pull the permits and have the, um, what do I say, um, uh, where, whereby we'll, you know, we're, we're entering a uh, 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 spirit of uh, uh, of cooperation, uh, where um, you know we're looking for alternatives rather than obstacles to make these sort of projects work, and that uh, folks that want to invest in Moorhead on these great mixed-use commercial or housing projects find um, a really great experience in Moorhead. So, thank you all. Thanks, Dan. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve this agreement. So moved, Chair. Second. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, no further discussion. I just wanted to um, echo what uh, Council Member White and City Manager Dan Molly, um, their gratitude and thanks to um, Mr. Bachman uh, for having the ability to think outside the box and be creative with this TIF. Um, it's just really a welcoming project here in Moorhead and just wanted to extend my gratitude. Thank you. With that, uh, we'll take a roll call vote on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ali? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Burns? Aye. Carlson? Yes. Coda? Aye. Hand? Aye. Um, Paulson? Aye. Schauman? Aye. White? Yes. Thank you. Motion approved. Thank you. Next item uh, we'll move into is the annual development report and the floor is yours, Derek. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, I know what Dan being on, he's very passionate about this as well. This is really a, a um, I, we shared it in our last meeting packet to the EDA, but we felt that it was important to draw out a few highlights from the 2020 annual development uh, report. Uh, this is a, a, a nice team effort by a lot of a lot of the city staff and, and city leadership over there to really highlight some of the great things that happened in 2020. Most uh, most people view 2020 as a very difficult and, and challenging year, but uh, some things that really stand out to, to us when we look at this development report is that there was a, a significant amount of investment made in this community. Our uh, commercial uh, commercial permit values, when you specifically look at that in, in a base that we're trying to really uh, accelerate, uh, we almost doubled our investment between 2019 and 2020. So again, significant redevelopment and investment in our community. 
uh, in a very trying time. So as Dan mentioned, you know, there's a lot of a lot of unknowns with maybe what the, the future of, of commercial looks like, especially when you look at office, um, office in, in particular. Uh, but a lot of these projects, whether they're looking at mixed use, whether they've added uh, values of housing, whether they've um, been working with long-term uh, prospects and moving into Moorhead, uh, that found value in, in what we're trying to accomplish. Um, there's a lot of highlights in here too. Um, and I can be very specific or very generalized, but I think I'll just maybe highlight on a few of them. And again, Dan and um, Mayor Carlson and, and Deb White, feel free to uh, interject because this is, this is just as much success for, for you guys as well of, of important aspects. Uh, single family and multifamily continue to grow. Uh, we have our housing goal in downtown where we have uh, over uh, 250 units or over halfway there to our, our 505 goal. Uh, we had multiple Renaissance Zone projects, including the Van A one, uh, which is next to Junkyard. We had the Main Avenue, 12th and Main, where Kevin Bartram did next to his project. We had Block 37 flats. We had the Storefront Rehab Program, which we saw uh, Junkyard and, and Seoul Avenue complete their, their permanent outdoor space. Uh, which shout out to Seoul Avenue being featured on uh, Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives just I think a week and a half ago. Uh, so hopefully they get some good attraction from that. Uh, YHR Partners was another one that completed their work. Uh, we finalized our downtown master plan, which has been a, a really great thing and has given some vision and some direction for a lot of folks. Uh, we saw a significant uh, investment too with, with other uh, commercial industrial projects throughout the, the city. Uh, we had Muscatel's Collision Center that's uh, finishing up. Uh, DS Beverages has another um, project underway. Solutions Behavioral Network is a large project. Uh, and in downtown, we still have uh, some finishing projects like the uh, Armory event space that Bartram's working on and, uh, and some others as well. So uh, some things to look forward to and I think where we hope that the EDA can have a a, uh, a role in is specifically our uh, city comprehensive plan and we made a, a specific note within our within our packet looking at that uh, link and how you can put your input into the city comprehensive plan uh, feel free to take some time and go through that uh, share with your your colleagues your residents uh, your neighbors um, we had tremendous uh, support and participation within our downtown master plan and, and I feel like this one is just as important because we, we definitely are laying that foundation and groundwork for the next tier, 10 years citywide. So take the time to, to go through that and share that. Um, I'd be remiss to, to, to not mention um, the amount of, uh, as Sherry mentioned, the amount of communication and assistance that we tried to get to businesses this past year. Uh, we had the Moorhead Cares uh, grants. We had over 200 businesses get supported, um, over $1.8 million of funds that went out. We've been working hand in hand with the county on getting additional funds out. Another 1.25 million just uh, went out the door last week. So uh, I think there was 78 approved businesses and, uh, and I can touch on that a little bit as we, we move into my report, but um, uh, significant amount of dollars that are coming out in, in helping our community. We know that the, the challenge is, is not overcome yet, uh, especially as consumer confidence and just how businesses plan for the future is extremely unknown and, and uncertain, but I think uh, I have to give a lot of credit to our businesses to being creative and innovative on how they can uh, facilitate growth and also um, just adapt to a very challenging time when we had very, very different uh, policies and uh, procedures on uh, the handling of COVID between the two states. Um, I know Dan Molly and Amy and, and myself uh, had many phone calls uh, talking through those situations. Uh, we are so uh, grateful to those businesses to, to stick through it with us. Um, we, we were a listening pad for them. We, we communicated with the state. Uh, we hope that our, our voice is being heard at the state level and, uh, and we hope we can, we can continue to work forward with them. Um, maybe I'll, I'll pause there. Dan, do you have anything you'd like to add about the, the um, report? 
No, I, well, yes, I'm sorry. I can't, I, I try not to talk, I do. But there's one thing in the report that I'd encourage everyone to look for. And it's, um, the word I've been using is accelerating. And so it's, you know, if you look back a couple years ago, the, the graphs for commercial will be right here. Last year, it's right here. And next year, we expect it to be up here. And if we're not accelerating, then we can't say we're accelerating anymore, but we absolutely are. And so I just encourage uh, the partnership, the willingness to work with the community, to listen, uh, to get some of these exciting uh, things done in Moorhead. It is, it is the time. Um, a lot of what we were talking about in the commercial industrial uh, realm was built in, in the early 1970s and it was built to last 50 years, and we're here. So, looking forward to this. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next item, I think, or you, I, I could, I was a little confused that you were taking eight, nine, 10, all at the same time. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yeah. I, I just had my hand up. I, I wanted to, in fact, I had highlighted this in before the meeting because I, and I know Dan was touching on this, but I think it's worth getting out there on the record publicly. So in that report, if anybody missed it, we more than doubled our new commercial and institutional building value in 2020 over 2019, more than doubled in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, to me that, that you know, as Dan said, that acceleration and uh, just, I think it's a testament to the hard work of our staff, of our community partners, and really an indication of the momentum that we're building here in Moorhead. Thank you. Uh, and, and Chair Burns, if I might jump in, sure. uh, just to pick up on what's being said, I had a chance this past week to go tour Vinay and Comstock Commons and the, the quality of development we're getting now is is really quite nice and I, so I think when we sit here and we approve things uh, we're not approving projects just to have projects they're quality projects that are really creating character in our community so uh, hats off to staff and and to the development community uh, for for coming and, and speaking with us and investing in the community the chair uh, chairman if I could make a Yes. comments and ask the question please. go ahead thank you uh, I, the first question i have uh derek would be the first in new home program i noticed there were no applications for that program um processed in 2020 is is that just because people don't know about the program or do we need to revamp that or take a take a second look at that program that's a really good question, and, and I'd maybe defer to, to Dan, because that's a program that I'm typically not involved with. Um, I know our community development department works on that, but Dan, do you have any comments on that? You know, I don't. I'm going to have to look into that, Joel, and get back to you if that's okay. I can okay. certainly add <clears throat> at our next uh, meeting next month, maybe uh, we could include that on the uh, agenda for discussion. Yeah, that'd be great, Dan. I mean, the program itself looks uh, very enticing for first-time home buyers that may be, uh, may be faced with some special assessments tied to their property. So um, certainly, I guess, don't understand why it wouldn't have been utilized. So uh, why don't we have a discussion there? The second question I have is really related to probably coordination with the completion of the comp plan and where we're going with residential uh, subdivision development in the future. Um, you know, we have a lot of great things going and year over year growth in the residential um, lot supply. Um, but, you know, we still only have one and a half years uh, worth of fully service buildable lots available in Moorhead. Um, so I guess the question is, as we go through the comprehensive plan update process, um, it, you know, are we kind of on hold as far as developing future subdivisions until that plan is done? Or, um, you know, are we still talking about new residential subdivisions in the future um, in order to continue to support our building, buildable lot stock within the community? Yes, I can take that one, Derek. Um, so th th that right there is the purpose of the comprehensive plan, is to prepare for that growth. Um, we've built out our existing plan is th th those items are done. So. <laughs> hats off to the past previous councils for, for planning and setting this aside. Uh, we do have a growth plan that's actually a really thoughtful plan. It's good. And now for our comprehensive plan to, to fit that. We just don't want to go and, and, and build, uh, push infrastructure into areas uh, where the market isn't going to 
isn't going to move. So uh, this is an opportunity to hear from the community and plan for that growth. So that is certainly part of uh, the purpose for that whole process. So, so Dan, you don't anticipate um, any sort of delay, because I know a comprehensive planning update takes some time to get into place, and then obviously through just the, the typical city processes, um, you know, we only have a year and a half worth of buildable lots right now. Um, is there any sort of timing constraints here that we have as we go through the comprehensive planning process so that we ensure that we don't you know, put a, a governor or a bottleneck on residential housing development in Moorhead. You know, I don't see that. Oh, sorry, is someone speaking up? So I, I, I don't anticipate that delay, Joel, by way of our, um, uh, in the last year, a five-year comprehensive plan that we put together citywide so we can see across the organization as far as what those needs are gonna look like. So um, for, for new lot construction and planning and things like that, I think you know, we're fit pretty well. It would be nice to set some analytics together by way of how many lots we would like to have, single family, multifamily at all times in the, in the, in the whole so we can plan for that growth. I would expect that's gonna come out of this uh, process as well. But as far as this summer and planned projects, um, uh, for new growth, uh, th those are those are in a queue um, and part of our five-year comprehensive plan. Okay, thank you, Dan. And I would just encourage everyone to get the word out about the comprehensive plan update. I, I think it's uh, extremely important that we engage uh, as many community members as possible. Uh, and this is a great opportunity to have folks um, provide their input on the growth and the direction of, uh, of the city of Moorhead. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, planning period time. So thank you, Dan. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Joel. Uh, next item, I think. Uh, uh, the economic development report at Derek. Yeah, thanks, Chair Burns. I'll be uh, I'll be real quick. I uh, I touched on a lot of them uh, already, but uh, this county program and the the biggest thing that I wanted to probably stress on this is. Uh, well, first off, thanking Amy, because Amy, out of the probably 78 applications that were approved, probably did about uh, 50 of them. So Amy's time and energy uh, to go through these applications was, was extremely um, well needed, and, and I'm glad we had our, our staff's eyes on this as well. So uh, shout out to Amy to go, going through all these. As you can imagine, we've, um, we've been coordinating state grants, federal grants, uh, local assistance, um, trying to, to kind of formulate something that gives people the most need. Um, our role in this particular one was was probably more so a little bit of the development of it, of what you know should look like, but also um, ultimately being the, the communicator to make sure all of our businesses that may apply or may qualify for this applied. And uh, I can say by going through the list, there was, there was maybe only um, two to three businesses that uh, did not apply for this that would have quali qualified for it just based on their own personal uh, preference, whether their financial situation or whatever. So we, we had a tremendous amount of term, uh, turnout for this uh, program that Clay County rolled out. The other thing that was extremely difficult, and I, and I think it's worth just noting is a lot of the state assistance that have been, has been rolling out this past year in 2020 um, excluded new businesses. So they needed a reference point of 2019 tax returns versus 2020 tax returns. And that uh, put us in a really tricky spot because as Dan mentioned, we're, we're accelerating, we wanna see new growth. We've had a lot of great businesses start, start up not by choice to start in <laughs> the worst economic development or economic situation um, possible, um, but it's just the way their construction timelines came about and, and, uh, and that made it extremely difficult for these folks. Um, and these were specifically this, these dollars and I saw Amy's cursor go across and I wanna make sure I, I touch on it. These were for, for restaurants, bars, gyms and event centers. This, this money was set aside from the state of Minnesota to counties uh, that were specifically looking at the, the governor's more recent orders when he shut down indoor dining on November 22nd. So that's where these funds were kind of allocated towards. But, 
but new businesses were kind of left in the in the wayside there so we're grateful that the county recognized that gap and was able to fund some of those folks because you know places like uh, uh, a nature of the north um, who is has provided so much activation in life uh, on center avenue swing barrel um, and many many others um, we are, are grateful that they've been able to survive one um, but also see some assistance come in through us through this locally uh, to keep kind of thriving so we're hoping that they can have a relatively uh, undisrupted 2021 uh, whatever that may look like, uh, but I know a lot of them are excited and still hungry to, to do things. Interestingly enough, when I was talking to a lot of these business owners, um, a lot of them got leaner and more efficient on how they do business, which as a new business owner, that as much as you wanna make money and you wanna be successful, it made them really look internal and say, okay, how do we be the most effective uh, with what we have? So I think it's, it's gotten uh, some of our business owners very savvy and very effective on how they run their businesses. So I, I'm excited to see that as well. Um, th the only two other things I wanted to touch on is uh, Macara Real Estate Services. So we did uh, enter an agreement with PRG, Property Resource Group. That is uh, a relationship that we have for um, representing the city-owned parcels in the Macara Industrial Park. So out by RDO and that segment. Um, we're having good conversations, preliminary conversations about um, where we go and how we market that property. Uh, between City Manager Molly and, and other staff, we felt that it was, was worth a shot to uh, let a, a development firm or a real estate professional firm uh, market those lots and, and see what happens. You know, city staff isn't, and, and staff just isn't really equipped to market those on a daily basis or we're seeing what happens out of that, and I think we're we're going to see some outcomes with new businesses and developments uh, come from this relationship. Um, if you haven't uh, noticed, I, I, I'm sure many of you have seen, but there is a new president for the Fargo Moorhead West Fargo Chamber of Commerce, uh, Shannon Full. Uh, her experience is from the latest experiences from the Twin Cities, so I'm, we're hopeful that the local chamber here will will add some expertise and some connections to uh, the Minnesota side of stuff. So we're eager to to build off of that relationship. And uh, and as I mentioned, um, so much of what we do in economic development and what Sherry does at the Moorhead Business Association is is be a listening ear for so many businesses. So we are looking to uh, continue our partnership with the state of, of uh, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce on their Grow Minnesota initiative. And those are uh, capturing key data and information from these visits, these sites visits, uh, that we're not only uh, creating local policies that are effective and efficient for businesses, but also that our state understands our local business economy and, uh, and recognize the impact that statewide policies have on us locally too. So with that, I will stop. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Any questions from the board? Any hands raised? Okay, good. So that will move along here. Um, I know that we've already had some discussion about the comprehensive plan, which was part of item number 10. Uh, so I'll invite any other comments that people may have <clears throat> thought of uh, in the interim here. Hearing none, I think uh, just a reminder that uh, any of you who are interested in building permit status, please take a look on the city's website. The link is on the agenda on your agenda, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, before we adjourn, this is the time of year for the election of officers. And uh, we did not have that on the agenda since it's been several months since we've met. So I think uh, we've had some discussion about that and, and we'll include that as an agenda item for next month. So just be aware of it and if anybody wants a position of uh, importance, let Derek or Amy know. <laughs> so with that, uh, any comments? Hearing none, uh, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>